All right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM, joining you as usual from San Diego. And today I'm delighted to welcome Andrew Duffy, who is in Montgomery, Alabama. How are you doing, Andrew? Hey there, John. Doing well today. How are you? Great. Absolutely great. And uh, Andrew is the Chief Relationship Officer with Leaders, uh, Leaders Press. And um, Leaders Press is, uh, you know, helps people, has a whole methodology for helping publish people's books and get them on the USA and uh, Wall Street uh, Journal best-selling uh, best selling list. And so what we're going to talk about today is the whole the whole idea of number one, why you should think about publishing a, a business book and second off, how somebody like Leaders Press can help you do that. Um, because let's face it, Andrew, um, everybody at some stage feels like they have a book in them. Yeah. Um, and especially, you know, in business, you've been around a, a while. So how do you help people actually analyze whether, you know, because obviously Leaders Press is selective, you know, because you've got that track record, but how do you help people um, either figure out whether they really have a book inside them or help them, you know, maybe develop the the, the concept? Yeah, um, well, I think just about everybody has a book inside them. Mm -hmm. uh, primarily our authors that we speak to uh, are people that have been in the business world for a long time. They're usually CEOs, entrepreneurs. Uh, they have had to be successful to get to the point where they actually want to talk to us. Um, so at that stage, somebody, there's, there's some kind of story. There's something that they can do, whether it is to tell their own legacy story about you know, how they got there and, and teach others, or whether it's to create a funnel for their business, just to explain it to everybody you know, what they did and replace their business cards with a book. So what we do is that when someone comes to us with that idea, since we're in the business, we know how to do interviews and talk to people and, and get that book out of them with understanding how it fits inside the market. So if someone comes to us to say a coach, they've got a consulting business that they want to get off the ground, they know that they have to get a book out there to talk to uh, new, uh, uh, new potential clients for them, We've worked with enough people that that we know how that we can get them to get a book out and onto the page. And through a ghostwriting process, we are able to do that. Mm -hmm. um, so um, so at what point is when somebody thinks, OK, you know, I've been around a business a long time. Um, how do you help kind of focus them? Because I'm sure there's a lot of times people come to you, maybe they have. Uh, a book idea, but it's really like three books or four books or different yeah. subjects, or it's a <laughs> smorgasbord. How do you help? How do you help focus? Yeah, you're you're completely right about that. Um, they have a whole lot of ideas. Sometimes they they maybe do have more than one book. The, the thing that we do is that early on in the process, we talk strategies. Like what it, mm -hmm. question I ask everybody that when they first get into a room with me about a book is, what is this book going to do for you? What do you want it to do for you? And, but depending on what their answer is for that, then we pick what topic and what idea they have that's going to help them best achieve what they want. Uh, the strategy sessions, really it's just getting a mind map together. It's like, what kind of tangents do we have? And then what ideas are the best complementary to then fit into 50,000 words? And if you have an idea for another book, we'll do another book later on, but we want to have one that's the perfect introduction to you as your first one. And then maybe on, you're going to have something that's more focused on practical ideas or on other, on other material that you just absolutely want to get out there. So um, what are some of the reasons why people want to um, publish books? Because let's face it, I mean, very few people get rich off of business <laughs> books. And uh, so that's not normally the, the, the driving factor. And if it is, I mean, you want to have something special. But what are some of the, what are some of the different drivers of, and, and, and from your point of view, why is it still a good idea to, to publish a book? Hmm. Uh, the main thing that I think drives a lot of our authors is their desire just to be able to tell their story and help others. Uh, getting to the point where they are in business to where they want to write a book that's connected to it. Uh, they've had a lot of ups and downs. Some of them have had businesses that have failed. 
And they think that they have something, and they almost always do have something that mm -hmm. is unique about themselves that they then want to share, maybe help somebody overcome the hurdles that they're going to run into. Uh, getting rich off the books doesn't typically happen, no. But what they do have the ability to do also, and this is a major driving force with why a lot of people come to us, is connect the book into their business funnel and to open up the door to leads to business opportunities that they would never have had it otherwise. Mm -hmm. And they can do that by telling their story. They can do that by telling specific business insights, or they could have a book that is just absolutely purely driven to be a lead generator and to advertise themselves. And, you know, as I said before, replace their business card. Mm. Yeah, exactly. And, and I think there is um, still with the, the, the human psyche in many ways. I mean, there is a, a validation or a credibility that comes with authoring a book. Uh, and I think that helps, you know, that helps business people a lot. And I think that's one and, and companies a lot because we still have this thing ar ar around books, which obviously you know more about than I do. But it's it still seems to be a thing that really helps to, to, to validate the the person um, you're you're interacting with yeah absolutely uh that, that's the concept that we go into is just building authority when mm -hmm. you have a book it gives you a certain authority that you don't have prior to it it gives a way that some, the readers that you're targeting your specific audience that you're targeting can unlock the door to understand why are you someone who stands out among the crowd i mean let's face it there are thousands upon thousands of businesses that concentrate on sales. Uh, again, we, we go into that coaching consultant uh, field mm -hmm. in which a lot of our authors are there. There's more of those every single day. Uh, many, many CEOs that uh, look at their exits think about, well, after I'm going to do my exit, I don't really necessarily want to go retire and go fishing. <laughs> mm -hmm. I kind of want to start my own lighter, easier business where I'm going to be teaching people. Um, mm -hmm. So you have to stand out. You have to have something that says, why am I different from the 800 different business coaches that you might be looking at that, that you consider uh, bringing in to help uh, streamline your business? Mm -hmm. And and how, um, tell me, I mean, obviously there is the, you know, there's a lot of self-publishing and all of that going on uh, and all of that. So um, why should somebody go to professionals, you know, like yourselves, and and uh, and kind of outsource this project as opposed to trying to do them themselves. Because I do think sometimes people think, well, you know, I could devote time, I could sit down and write a book, and then I could publish, I could save all that money and everything. But it's a lot more complicated than people yeah. think. <laughs> that that, and I can tell you, uh, I would say probably 25, 30 percent of our actual authors have tried to self-publish before. Mm -hmm. and have realized how incredibly difficult it is if you want to do it right. I mean, you could go and you could put a book together in a year and get it out on uh, like a print on demand situation and have it out there. It doesn't mean anybody's ever going to see it. And it doesn't mm -hmm. even really mean that it's going to be exactly what you want. It's not necessarily going to be good. Um, why you want to bring in professionals is that when you get that first book out there, you're only going to have your first book one time. You want to have it done right. And you want to have it where it's actually in front of an audience that's going to be able to buy it, see it and consume it. Um, Self-publishing can be fine. You can actually absolutely hit the uh, ball out of the park with self-publishing. I mean, ask Jack Canfield with, with uh, Chicken Soup for the Soul. Mm -hmm. You you can do it. But the ones for every chicken soup for the soul, there's a hundred books that sold six copies to their friends and, <laughs> and, and, and that, and that, and didn't go anywhere. So, it, and then you, when you, another thing you realize when you self publish is you think I'm going to be able to do it cheaply, but it really not the many people I know that self published and then came to us actually had a higher investment in self publishing than they did actually working with us. Uh, once they, if they tried to do it right. And so you'll realize as you get into it, all the heavy lifting that you have to do to actually get a book published ends up being expensive when you're doing it, even by yourself. Yeah, no, I, I agree. I mean, I think uh, people probably don't realize the amount of time and effort uh, that needs to go into it and all the different moving parts. And I think one of the, one of the other, one of the other uh, pieces, and I know this is part of your process, but really trying to establish where it fits in the market. Cause uh, you know, as you said, I mean, yeah, somebody could write another book on sales. Sales is a very broad topic. 
um, and they could throw it out there and it'd just be lost in the noise. And, you know, those six people who, who those six friends who buy your book, you know, then they give it away to the first uh, garage sale they have. Um, so um, how do you help position for the market? Because I do, I feel like that's the thing, because that's the thing with businesses often struggle with is figuring out their, their the, or identifying the target buyer and the target. So identifying the target audience for the book and who it's going to resonate with. How do you yeah, do that? that? That is actually the most important thing about getting a book ready to go is positioning. You're absolutely right. The way that we do that, primarily we are a ghostwriting business. So when mm -hmm. someone actually is coming to us, very rarely do they actually have a manuscript ready. They're usually talking to one of our project managers uh, who is an expert who has been doing books with us for years. He knows, first of all, what kind of books sell and what kind of audiences generally will buy books and how to talk to our author and begin to get out the ideas like let's say it's someone that's in sales how to get the specifics mm -hmm. out of them that we can then use to look at the market and position uh an example a good example the easiest way to describe it is one of our most successful books was a book called next level Cybersecurity with sai Huda. and what we did was we analyzed size material and looked at all right what market areas are going to want to read this book who are going to actually be the ones that are going to pick up a book on how to stop the hack which is, is what mm -hmm. his book was about so when we actually positioned it for the marketing you know we, we looked at the many different subcategories that exist uh whether it be on amazon barnes and noble whatever that then were relevant to the material in his book so when we began to advertise it to the specific audiences he was looking for we were using those subcategories that were pre-existing to market it uh at a low level so his mm -hmm. book was marketed towards people interested in keyboard logging viruses and malware just general it concepts and so when the book launched he hit bestseller in all of those areas and then became a bestseller in network security and he was number one in network security for about a year and a half so wow. he hit the audience he was looking for and it made it percolate up to the top where he was in a major category for a long time yeah no that's a that's a that's a fantastic example and uh you know about going like really really targeted and and building from there and i guess also when you when you go to this uh, interviewing and strategy session i mean i think some uh, sometimes we have half-baked ideas right and yeah. i mean i guess part of the, the the part of your process is you have to really tease that and make sure that there is something behind it yeah absolutely i mean there's there's a lot of times that you're going to have to separate out ideas that just that aren't going to particularly go anywhere and usually with our authors their understanding of that uh when they come to us i mean they may come to us with vast amounts of material that you, you just absolutely have to find what's going to be that thing that we know because we're professionals we've seen this in the market what's going to be that thing that's going to resonate with somebody so we laser focus them in on following the path that we know is going to hit with search engine optimization that's going to hit with those positioning categories. So we're already kind of dragging them into the area in which their audience, which they're writing towards the audience that we know is going to be able to actually go in there and pick up the book. Um, but sometimes a lot of material gets uh, left on the wayside. I mean, if someone comes to us with an idea that's completely untenable, we'll tell them <laughs> and we have turned people away. Uh, it, it has happened, but uh, generally there's there's a germ of something in there that we can always put together and, and get to work if someone is really devoted to it and is willing to accept that help to get there. Yeah, and, and I guess the other part, and this is a um, this is a big consideration, particularly if you're um, if you're going to try self publishing, is is it's one thing actually getting the book written, getting the book published. It's another thing um, marketing it and mm -hmm. you know and really pushing it because I think sometimes people think the launch of the book is the is the end of the process as opposed to it's really kind of the beginning, right? Yeah, that, that is actually true. When the everything is building to that launch being successful. So when you know we're putting the launch together, we're building pre-sales, we're building all of that hype that's gonna get it launched. But once it's launched, yes, then you absolutely want to make sure that you have built on your side a way to take advantage of the book. Um, putting out a book in nonfiction, you're not gonna just see it 
magically make sales and, and get royalties mm -hmm. off of it. Um, I even tell people that royalties are just not where it's at in nonfiction. It's not that if your goal to the book is to just have it launch and then expect to see royalty checks come in and that's, and that's where you're going to go, you're going to be very unhappy. Uh, if you want to do that, write a romance novel. <laughs> yeah. Because those are, the, those are what make money like that. So, yeah, and we do help with that as well. As we, we, we tell them what successful, what ways uh, we've had authors that have been successful in getting their book seen post-launch and getting it seen long-term. And we'll write the book with that goal in mind. Uh, we'll put in material where there are hooks in the book to take them in other directions to things that are going to support them, like if they're doing podcasts like yours or if they're doing mm -hmm. public speaking. Uh, we'll even have situations where somebody could hit one of those hooks just by reading a preview on Amazon, uh, which is a little hack that, that uh, a lot of uh, publishers do. That, Somebody doesn't even have to buy the book necessarily to end up stumbling into one of our clients funnels or, or something that's going to support mm -hmm. it. Um, so yeah, you absolutely need to have a robust uh, structure ready to go so that you're, you can take advantage of having that book out there. And um, what are some of the most creative things you've seen some of your clients do um, to, to publicize and, and how, or, or not just even publicize, but how they've used the book? Oh, I mean, our clients uh, will do just about anything they have that, that, that to get something. I mean, we've had uh, clients that have gone on and, and done stints on Good Morning America that have uh, built podcasts that have been structured specifically just to key into the book. Um, a lot of them will actually connect their book to material like workbooks. Mm -hmm. uh, we had one of our authors that did that, uh, Kristen Cripps, which where she actually her book was leading them was leading someone directly by telling her story about how she got into business towards another smaller book that was supporting the main book that was uh, basically how to enter into the reality business and it was a workbook of step by step on how you do it so reading the book about her and about her going from being a bartender into a millionaire ceo then led to the books that actually began to have practical material that helped her sell the first book so they went back and forth with each other so there's all kinds of ways to do it public speaking and coaching are really mm -hmm. the things that you can you can absolutely kick off and do really well with uh being able to actually make money off of your book that is absolutely one of the best things uh chris katranis uh disruptive leadership i know that what he does hilariously he uh he just takes his book into boardrooms and just throws it down on tables. He doesn't even do hmm. presentations anymore. He just, whenever he goes in and, and he's having a meeting uh, to, to sell his telecom uh, infrastructure business, he just goes in. The very first thing he does is he just hit, takes the book, puts it in front of everybody in the room and said, all right, I don't have to talk for an hour. Just go read that and we'll have another meeting later where you're going to probably do business with <laughs> I love it. That's fantastic. No, I, I love that. Hey, uh, is has there uh, has there been one book that maybe you were you know you weren't a bit sure of, and you you know how it's going to go, and it really really surprised you, like one that you maybe took a chance on, but that turned out to, that really surprised you. Yeah, I, I think I think that's probably going to be Kristen's book. I had just mentioned it, but uh, if you ever read it, she has just such an incredibly unique way of talking. It was it was really out of the wheelhouse for a lot of what we had, had done previously. Uh, I mean, I know that when I actually uh, sold her the book, she was she was running back and forth and, and doing business at the same time, talking on her on her. Uh, Mm -hmm. on her car phone, <laughs> the, the speaker, the Bluetooth speaker on her car. Mm -hmm. um, it, that's just how she is. She goes, goes, goes. And so when we were writing for the book, um, you know, she insisted that we keep it in her voice, which was great. We, we like to do that. Her voice is, uh, she has colorful language and, and she likes to do things that are completely out of the wheelhouse, like write LOL <laughs> in the book. Mm -hmm. You can't do that, but <laughs> she did. Uh, and so we were a little dubious. We were kind of worried that it would it would not be so successful based on who she was trying to target for the book. But it actually really was a lot. Uh, it had a lot of really good uh, reactions to people that read it because it was like this is really refreshing. This is somebody that uh, that I absolutely could do business with because she's she's speaking on my level and, and in my language. Um, and we we cut some stuff out of that book. Uh, we did because there were, uh, there were some, there were some colorful stories that, that didn't make it in there, but, uh, we kept 90% of what she had. And I, I was very happy with how it came out. So to speak. It's 
fantastic. Well, maybe you need to do a director's cut version too, or a bonus. <laughs> I, don't, I, don't think, I don't think that's going to happen. <laughs> if she's listening to this, she knows exactly what we removed. And she is like, yeah. I love it. Well, listen, Andrew, this has been fantastic. All of Andrew's information is going to be below this video and Leaders Press. But before we go, please do tell people a little bit more about you and Leaders Press and, uh, and uh, you know, why they should contact yeah. you. Absolutely. I mean, we're we're one of the leading hybrid publishers uh, right now in the United States, actually internationally. Uh, our company is out of uh, Italy. Alinka Rutkowska is our CEO, so you may have run into her in, in mailing lists or if you're in groups like JVMM, Genius Network. Um, but I think that we're unique because of our team and because our team is specifically in-house. We do this all the time. We're great to work with, and we laser focus on making business books work for you. So. If you have any interest in that at all, uh, links are down below. I'm absolutely always willing to talk. You can contact me directly and, and get on my calendar and we'll have a chat. Yeah, absolutely. I would encourage you, if you if you think you have a book in you, if this is the time that you want to explore this, I would absolutely encourage you, go at least have a conversation because it's good to learn how somebody like Andrew and their company can help you uh, because, uh, let's face it, there's a lot of... You can try and do it yourself. You can do it. The, you can do it what you think is the cheap way, but it'll probably end up, as Andrew said earlier, probably end up more expensive, if if not just in time and stress, <laughs> but money too, probably. All right, listen. Thanks again, Andrew. Thank you for watching and listening, and I'll see you all again soon. Thank you. Yeah.